Good day, ladies and gentlemen. It is I once again, the resident movie lover himself, Justin, Bridgewater's Finest on YouTube, Blockbuster underscore guy on Twitter, and welcome back to the 2013 Bridgewater's Finest Movie Awards in conjunction with the resident movie lover blog at residentmovielover.blogspot.ca. It's a new day, but the awards roll on. We are back to give out a couple more awards here. You might notice I might look a little bit under the weather. I think I may have picked up a cold through the night, but I've got my water. I've got my tea, and uh, we are here to continue talking shop about movies, because who doesn't love talking shop about movies? We're going to be getting into, in this video, the awards for the people that make the movies, and we're looking at our top three best actors, best actresses, and best directors of 2013. Let's let the men lead off here. We're going to go with the top three best actors of 2013. No honorable mentions in this category, so let's get right into it. Number three in the award for Best Actor of 2013 is Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal of Donnie Darko fame plays Loki in the movie Prisoners. Loki is a police detective with a near impossible task of trying to locate two missing girls while at the same time plagued but also driven by his own internal demons. Jake Gyllenhaal would have been higher on this list with a second notable role but he plays a fantastic role here in Prisoners. It's very subtle, it's very low-key. Jake Gyllenhaal does that fairly well. He's just got those facial expressions that just lend themselves to that kind of role. He does really, really well in Prisoners, a credit to the direction and to the actor himself. So Jake Gyllenhaal is my number three Best Actor of 2013. My number two Best Actor of 2013 is James Franco. Now, James Franco plays the role of Alien in Spring Breakers, who is a drug and gun dealer in St. Petersburg, Florida, in his own words, living the American dream. James Franco also portrays a fictionalized version of himself in This is the End, as the host of a housewarming party on the eve of the biblical rapture. I'm not going to lie, Franco's mostly on this list for Spring Breakers because Alien is a fantastic character that is creepily and beautifully acted by Franco. Like, he is just... Franco is so good in Spring Breakers. If you haven't seen Spring Breakers, he just... He commands the entire movie, and he is just phenomenal in there. But he's also really, really funny, and this is the end, and Franco's just a fantastic actor and can do that. So for those reasons, James Franco is my number two best actor of 2013. And my number one best actor of 2013... Try telling me three years ago that this guy would be on my list. Matthew McConaughey. Now, Matthew McConaughey plays the titular character in the movie Mud, who is a southerner with a deep sense of justice as well as love for his soulmate, played by Reese Witherspoon. And he also plays Ron Woodruff in Dallas Buyers Club, a rodeo enthusiast in 1985 Texas who contracts HIV and starts up a buyers club for alternative medicines to AZT, which was the only medicine available at the time, therefore waging a war on the Food and Drug Administration. I have to eat some crow on this one. I've never been a Matthew McConaughey fan at all. He has completely won me over with two very different, but just absolutely breathtaking performances. Like, he is so good in Mud, and then I see Dallas Buyers Club, and he is phenomenal in Dallas Buyers Club. Matthew McConaughey had a fantastic year, and for those reasons, Matthew McConaughey is my number one Best Actor of 2013. Let's move on to the ladies now, my Best Actresses of 2013. We've got three for this list as well, but before we do that, i got to toss out an honorable mention here to Sandra Bullock in Gravity. She was on the list for most of the year, unfortunately gets knocked off by the lady who takes number three, but she had a great, she was probably my favorite part of Gravity. I was not nearly as impressed by Gravity as some other people were, so an honorable mention goes to Sandra Bullock in Gravity. Number three on my Best Actresses of 2013 list is Mia Wachowski. Or Wasikowska. Or Wasikowska. I don't know how to pronounce her last name. And that's going to be a theme. Mia Wachowski plays India Stoker in the movie Stoker, an 18-year-old girl in the midst of a sexual awakening trying to solve a family mystery. Wachowski's performance really lends to the Hitchcockian feel of the movie Stoker, again, which is a credit to the director, we'll probably be talking about Chan Wook Park a little bit later, is a subtle, subversive, and very well-acted role and performance from Wachowski. So Mia Wachowski is my number three Best Actress of 2013. 
My number two best actress of 2013 is Jennifer Lawrence. It's a J-Law world, folks. We're all just living in it. Jennifer Lawrence reprises her role as Katniss Everdeen in The Hunger Games Catching Fire, who is plunged back into the world of the arena as the world of Pen M falls apart around her. Lawrence also plays the role of Rosalind in American Hustle, Irving's wife, the wife of the character played by Christian Bale, who engages in an affair with a gangster and divulges secrets about Irving's alliance with the IRS. Quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen, there is no end to the depth of talent of Jennifer Lawrence, and she so closely came to getting number one on this list. She was so good in The Hunger Games, she was so good in American Hustle, and she's just a great actress, and I think this is the second or third year in a row that she's been on my top list. The, the lady is just talented. She is just a really great actress. Jennifer Lawrence is my number two best actress of 2013. And my number one best actress of 2013 is Adele Exarchopoulos. At least I think that's how you say it. Adele Exarchopoulos plays the character of Adele in Blue is the Warmest Color. She's a 15-year-old girl who experiences love at first sight for the first time with a blue-haired girl named Emma, played by Leah Sedu, who probably also could have made this list. The Adele character discovers a major conflict in her own sexuality. She knows she's straight, she knows she likes men, but she also then finds out that she likes women and seems to like women a lot more than she likes men, but then seems to kind of bounce back and forth. It's a very... It was a difficult role to play, especially considering no one had ever heard of Adele Exarchopoulos before. This is basically her debut role. And Blue is the Warmest Color is a three-hour movie, but it's a three-hour movie that is absolutely commanded by one of the great breakout performances that I think I've ever personally witnessed. It's super realistic, it's beautifully performed, and all the arguments about the male gaze, as far as I'm concerned, are horseshit. Adele Exarchopoulos was 100% the best actress of 2013 with this role in Blue is the Warmest Color. She lands at number one on my list. Let's finish it off with one of my personal favorite awards, the Best Director of 2013. And because it's one of my favorite awards, I have a boatload of honorable mentions. I, I knocked it down to three, but honestly this honorable mention list could have been about ten directors long. Because the direction in a movie is something I really, really pay attention to. The direction and the creative, uh, creative path. But... I knocked it down to three for the honorable mentions, and then of course we have our top three award winners for the year. Honorable mentions go out to Denis Villeneuve, director of Prisoners, Nicholas Winding Refn, director of Only God Forgives, and Steve McQueen, director of Twelve Years a Slave. Again, there were a lot of directors that could have been on this list. I apologize that I couldn't fit you all on, but special honorable mention to Villeneuve, Refn, and McQueen. Now getting to the award winners, number three on my list of best directors of 2013 is Don Coscarelli for John Dies at the End. John Dies at the End is Coscarelli's stylish take on one of the strangest black comedies that I have ever personally read or watched. Coscarelli shot John Dies at the End with an 80s flair and modern competence at the same time. Just comes out with a great style, it's beautiful, it's got a great tone, it feels perfect for the subject matter. Don Coscarelli really knocked it out of the park with John Dice at the end. He lands at number three on my list of best directors of 2013. Number two on my list of best directors for 2013 is Harmony Kareen for Spring Breakers. Sorry, Tyler. Kareen makes use of color, like few directors I've ever seen. It's basically him and Refn and then everyone else. Just the use of color in this movie is it's almost a character unto itself. I would almost argue that Kareen's direction is a character unto itself, but the color especially is just used really, really, really well. And Kareen sets this heartbreaking but lovable tone throughout the entire movie. You can't help but smile even though something horrific could be happening on the screen. It's a perfect arrangement of shots, perfect choreography, it's experimental, it's absurdist, it's over the top, but it's just a big bucket of win. Like, Kareen made a phenomenal movie here, and for that reason it lands him at number two on my list of best directors of 2013. And number one on my list for Best Directors of 2013 is Chen Wook Park for Stoker. Chen Wook Park creates a supremely stylish, abstract, and gorgeous version of a fiery sexual family mystery. 
It's atmospheric and a slow burn. There's all kinds of symbolism in there, and there's a masterful eye here for the artistic vision of the director. At the end of the day, this movie's also one of the best directed movies I think I have ever seen. It's competence, it's convention, but it's also abstract in style. It's the whole package. Chan Wook Park hits a grand slam with this one, and he lands at number one on my list of best directors of 2013. So that's it, folks. Best actors, best actresses, and best directors of 2013. I want to thank you very, very much for popping on again and checking us out. Check us out again on the next part of the video where we are going to get into the top 10 worst movies of 2013. This is one of the big ones. We got a couple of honorable mentions and sucking on there as well, so you're really going to want to come back to that because we love to bitch about movies here. That's going to be it for me, the resident movie lover himself, Justin, Bridgewater's Finest on YouTube, Blockbuster underscore guy on Twitter. These are the 2013 Bridgewater's Finest Movie Awards in conjunction with the Resident Movie Lover blog at residentmovielover.blogspot.ca and we will see you in our top 10 worst movies of 2013. See you then.